Hi artist, welcome to the world of Rowie's Paint Box. I just got back from the farmer's market and everything there smelled so fresh. I could smell the apples in the air. So grab your art supplies and I'll grab some special guests who will teach us about nutrition. And I'll grab some more fruit too. So come on, let's go. It's Rowie's World, the place to be. To share your creativity. Jump in and dance, create and play. For a healthy snack, my friend Angela from Sugar Babe Cupcakes Hi is here to teach us about a healthy, nutritious snack. You ready to hear about it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Angela, what did you bring for us today? So I brought some apples that I picked up from my local farmer's market, but you guys could get these at the grocery store. That sounds great. Apples are so convenient and super yummy. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yes. So good. So we're going to make some apple dippers today. They're really fun and really healthy. Gianna, do you want to come up and help Angela make our snack? Sure. All right. Right here, we have yogurt. It's packed with a lot of protein. Who likes yogurt? Yeah, you all like yogurt. One of my favorite things that we can add to the yogurt or the apples. Cinnamon. cinnamon. And who likes cinnamon? We also have yummy honey. honey. Who likes honey? So we can drizzle it on top of the apples. Yum. Or we can add it to the dipper. Mix that up real good. Excellent. Looks delicious, doesn't it? Nice. Take some of your apples and you can dip right in there. There awesome. you go. Thank you so much, Angela. You're welcome. That's Thank a great you so snack. much for having me. It's good. Isn't it good? Yeah. <laughs> Would everyone like to try a piece of apple dippers? Yes. Come on up. Hey, come up and try. Would anybody like some cinnamon sprinkled on there? Yeah. Yes? I can eat this for days. <laughs> Okay, now that your bellies are all full, we're gonna move over and do our apple orchard painting. Are you yeah. ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. Today, we're gonna paint an apple orchard. We have Kaylin doing it on the iPad, and then we have a few of you doing it with pencil and paper. In order to do the landscape, we're gonna turn our canvas or our paper this way, landscape way. We have two brushes in the water, a big brush and a small brush. Take the bigger brush. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our horizon line. Because I'm gonna make my sky yellow and a little bit of pink, I'm gonna use yellow as my horizon line. And I'm just gonna make a line across my canvas. I'm gonna use yellow and white mixed together. If you want your sky to be blue, you can use blue for your horizon line. And then what I'm gonna do with my big brush is start filling in above that line with those colors. I just got my brush a little wet to smooth out my colors. Just make sure you don't get too much water on your paintbrush or else it'll drip. Once you have your sky the way you want, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the horizon line and we're gonna start doing the ground. I'm gonna wash off my brush and I'm gonna dry it off and I'm gonna do the pathway. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of the brown and a little bit of the white and I'm gonna make a line that goes all the way to the bottom of the canvas, just like that. It's kind of like a lazy S. And then I'm gonna do it again. All the way to the ground? All the way to the end of the canvas, just like that. Then you're gonna start filling it in. Then 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill our apple orchard with lots of green grass. Wash off your brush and dry it off. I'm gonna take this green, and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of yellow. It makes a really pretty lime green color. You don't want the grass to be perfectly smooth, so you can move your brush back and forth, back and forth like that. All the white space should be filled with green. Wow, this looks good. Oh, thanks, Grayson. Once you get that all filled in, we're gonna start on the trees. The trees towards the back of the apple orchard, they're gonna be smaller than the ones towards the front. They're further away. Apple orchard trees have a smaller tree trunk. So I'm gonna start right at the horizon line and I'm gonna just move my brush into the shape like that short little Y, okay? And then I'll just move it up like this into another little Y. Move it this way into another little Y. See that? Okay. And then I'll just start making little Ys, just like that. And those will be my guide for where I'll put the leaves. As you move down into your landscape, the trees would get larger. Their barks are kind of bumpy. You can put some shadow underneath the trees. So I'll use a little bit of the brown and the green mixed together, that lime green, and put a little bit of shadow underneath the trees. So I just wave my brush right under there because apple trees are really, really full. I'm gonna go back to my big brush and I'm gonna use the green and the white, green and white. And I'm just gonna dab my brush, just like that, and really fill the tree with lots of leaves. So I'm just dabbing my brush. And you want to start in the back and work forward. So start towards the back, work forward. Just move your brush all around. You can make the leaves any color. You can add some yellow to it. You can add some little blossoms to it. So you can add little, little white flowers to it. And then think about what color apples you want to add to your apple trees. Take your small brush, and wipe it off and dry it off. And dip it in the red. Just make sure it's really dry so it doesn't drip. And I'm just gonna put little dots of red in the trees. And if you want, you can add a bee to your painting. We're gonna have a special guest who's gonna tell us why bees are important to the apple orchard. Your last step is to sign your painting. Once you get your apple orchard the way you like it, what you should do is sign it. And with a tree painting, it's a really fun idea to put your name right in the tree so you can carve your name in the tree. It's a fun way to sign it, something different. I'm gonna add a little B and my painting's all done. These look great, you guys. Let's let these dry and meet our special guest. You ready? Yeah! Let's meet my friend Sharon. She's gonna teach us about our friends who help keep the apple orchard going. Hi kids. Say hello to Sharon. We have been beekeepers in my family for over 100 years. And in each beehive, there are about 60,000 bees. 60,000 bees, wow. This is one of the pictures of my dad. Those are bees and honeycomb and honey. But the most important part of my story today is that my grandfather had an apple orchard. And the reason we have bees in our family is because he had to have bees to make Apples. All of the fruit and many of the vegetables that you eat actually have to be pollinated. So even that apple that you enjoyed here today with your yogurt dip wouldn't have been possible unless this wonderful honeybee actually picked up pollen on her back legs and that she collects from flowers and she brings back to the hive. And guess what she does with pollen? She actually makes food for baby bees. 
That's why she collects pollen, and it benefits us in this grand way that we get to enjoy all these great foods. And one bee will work her entire lifetime to make an eighth of a teaspoon of honey. And you probably put a teaspoon in your dip this morning. So imagine there were eight bees that worked their entire life to make that wonderful snack. What? Yes. So we can actually see what it's like for a bee to fill up their pollen basket, the back of their legs. Right. You're going to stick your finger in the bottom and try to reach the flower just like a bee would. And when you pull it out, you're going to see how much pollen is on the back of your pollen basket, just like a bee would. Would you like to see inside of a beehive? Yeah. So in order to do that, I'm going to put my beekeeper suit together. Oh, that's cool. Right? That's awesome. But when I go to the beehives at Northampton Community College, when I open them up, guard bees come out to remind me that I'm probably disturbing them. So this is a good thing to have on. Let me show you what the inside of a beehive looks like. Oh, this is honeycomb. That? And this is what the bees make with all of that nectar that they create. They turn it into wax. That's actually honey. Do you see how there's little beads of honey? It smells good. Yeah. Beeswax has the most wonderful smell. That's amazing, Sharon. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for visiting us today in the world of Rowie's Paint Fox. If you paint it with us today or drew along with us, share your pictures at Rowie's Paint Fox. We can't wait to see them. See you next time.